Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. According to mythology, that's the inscription over the gates of hell. I'm... I'm not going in there. Let go! Suxi, don't! Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and as requested, today we'll be examining the 2014 found footage horror film, As Above, So Below. On the surface, As Above, So Below seems like a rehash of the exhausted found footage style genre of movies we've been inundated with lately. But when you dig deeper, it actually has more substance to it as a film about redemption, history, and ancient beliefs about life, death, immortality, and hell. The film is loosely based on Dante's Inferno, the first part of his epic 14th century poem, ironically named The Divine Comedy, with a group of people exploring the catacombs of Paris that resembles Dante's description of the nine circles of hell. The narrative also ties into the pursuits of alchemists throughout history, who tried to procure the Philosopher's Stone, a substance thought to have been capable of turning base metals into gold and giving its user immortality, which was thought to have been discovered in the 14th century by French alchemist Nicolas Flamel. The film follows Scarlett Marlowe, a young archaeologist with multiple PhDs that was fluent in various languages, including a few dead ones, as she followed in her father's footsteps to find the Philosopher's Stone, a task that led to his death. There aren't many likeable qualities about Scarlett at first, and she often comes off as a Mary Sue that frequently put herself and others in dangerous situations to further her academic and personal pursuits. But as the film unwinds, we see her growing and realising her flaws, to the point that she puts herself at great peril to help a friend. After recruiting an old friend named George, a cameraman named Benji, and some local experts on the catacombs to aid her in the dangerous trip, the group venture deep into the tunnels, not realising that they were entering the metaphorical and literal circles of hell. As mentioned earlier, this journey mirrors that of Dante, who ventured through hell, guided by the ancient Roman poet Virgil. In his story, hell is described as nine concentric circles of torment located within the earth, filled with the souls that had rejected spiritual values by yielding to their bestial nature. These circles each represent a thematic sin, beginning with the first circle, Limbo, followed by lust, gluttony, greed, wrath, heresy, violence, fraud, and coming to an end in the ninth circle, treachery. Scholars have regularly debated the meaning of this epic poem, but I've personally interpreted the Divine Comedy to be about the journey of the soul towards God by recognising and rejecting sin, just as this movie was about each of the characters confronting their inner demons and sins to survive. The film opens with our protagonist, Scarlet, entering restricted tunnels in Iran that were about to be demolished, hoping to find a clue leading to the location of the Philosopher's Stone. Just as the tunnels are about to be destroyed, she breaks through a wall and uncovers a statue filled with Aramid symbols known as the Rosetta Stone, a key needed to decipher hieroglyphics which directs her to Nicholas Flamel's tombstone. But as she frantically makes her way out, she stumbles on an apparition of her late father, who had taken his life after being driven mad in his pursuit for the Philosopher's Stone. This is important to note as her impetuous and roguish nature appeared to mirror her father, who is often described by his friends and people that knew of him as having been crazy. While this apparition initially appeared to be in her mind, we'll later discover that this was linked to the stone and its location. After heading to Paris to enlist the help of her old friend George, they head to a museum and decipher a riddle on the back of Flamel's tombstone that explained that he was buried halfway between the earth and hell. Since the alchemists of Flamel's day considered 741 to be the number of the devil, the group surmised that this meant that they thought hell was 741 feet below the earth, and that Flamel's tomb, by extension, was 370.5 feet below the earth. I think it's important to note that George is reluctant to help her at first, as in their last adventure, her actions led to him being imprisoned in a Turkish jail for trespassing. Furthermore, Scarlet had selfishly left him in prison while she pursued a lead. While initially stumped as to how they were going to head that far below ground, they soon realised that Fermel's tomb was likely in the catacombs below them, which is considered to be the largest graveyard on the planet, with miles of underground tunnels that contained over 6 million corpses. When they go on a tour to learn more about the catacombs, they find a sign stating that the entrance to Flamel's tomb was blocked off moments before a random guy sitting a few feet from them told them to see a guy named Papillon who knew the tunnels well. When they look back at him, he mysteriously disappears as he, much like Scarlet's father, was an apparition created by the catacombs. As a soul that was stuck within this hell, we'd later find out that he had asked them to specifically find Papillon as his fate was tied to decisions Papillon had made in the past, which is why he wanted him to re-enter the catacombs. 
On their way to the club where Pap was chilling, they find yet another ghost, this time of a woman in white that would disappear and reappear several times throughout their journey, indicating that they were being watched and judged long before they'd set foot in hell. While they do find Papillon and his girlfriend Susie, who are both experts on the catacombs, Pap initially rejects her proposal to guide them until he's told that there was likely treasure buried within the tomb of Flamel. After prepping Scarlet, her cameraman Benji and his crew, Pap guides them to a secret entrance under a bridge where George intended to wish them goodbye. But when they're attacked by a police officer that came out of nowhere, Papillon throws a smoke bomb and the entire group, including the reluctant George, are forced to go down the hole. Upon entering the catacombs, they soon discover another group of people dressed in white robes that had their eyes painted in blood and appeared to be involved in some sort of ritual led by the apparition seen earlier. This area was essentially Limbo, the first circle of hell in Dante's Inferno, resided by non-Christians and unbaptized pagans who were punished with eternity in an inferior form of heaven. The first circle of the Inferno, Limbo. Here suffer those that did not sin, yet did not have the required faith. This is the realm where virtuous pagans and unbaptized babies reside. The group then stumble on two different paths, the first one recommended by Pap, and a second one that Scarlet wanted to take, which was more direct. Papillon warns them that the second path was treacherous and too dangerous to go through, as one of his friends, Le Taupe, also known as the Mole, had ventured down there never to return. But when they go through the first path, they find themselves going in a circle and wind up back in front of the second path, which they hesitantly decide to go through. It's here that they begin to find clues, hinting at the deeper spiritual journey they had unwittingly found themselves on, with each of them forced to confront a major event in their lives where they'd committed sin in order to survive the rest of the trip. While not everyone's troublesome past is explored, we discover that Scarlet's sin was that she'd ignored a plea for help from her father. This contributed to his death and manifested itself in visions of her father and a phone call from him in the catacombs, where he asks Scarlet why she didn't help him. It's also implied that after he'd called her asking for help and she didn't reply, he'd immediately taken his life, which is why Scarlet dedicated the remainder of her life to following in his footsteps. What this essentially meant was that she had to resolve her feelings of guilt before being able to leave hell. George's event soon follows this when they stumble on a piano that looked exactly like the one he and his younger brother used to play on when they were children, down to the out of tune A4 key. We find out that when they were kids, they used to explore hidden caves, until one day George's little brother found himself trapped and drowned before George could find help. Much like Scarlet, George had been dealing with guilt since this tragedy, and this was the sin he needed to confront to cleanse his soul and make it out alive. As they continue further down, they find Papillon's friend Le Taupe, who had disappeared in the catacombs a few years ago, and he offers to guide them. However, this wasn't actually his friend, but was instead the damned soul of Le Taupe, forced to live in hell after dying in the caves. We get a hint as to his ghostly form with his ability to teleport from place to place, which he uses to guide them to another drop further into the earth, explaining that the only way out was to go down. This is similar to Dante's journey, where he discovers that the only way out was through each circle of hell, before finally emerging on the opposite side a little before dawn on the morning of Easter Sunday in 1300 AD. Once they reach the bottom, they enter the second circle of hell, Lust, which is filled with the raucous rumbling sounds of people that had given into Lust throughout history, from Cleopatra, Helen of Troy, to Francesca de Rimini. The group then stumble on a riddle, which Scarlet and George are able to decipher, to get to the next part of the tunnel, which housed the well-preserved body of Nicholas Flamel. Though the alchemist did eventually die, his use of the Philosopher's Stone had prevented his body from rotting. While not explicitly stated, I took this area to represent the third circle of hell, gluttony, with Flamel having used the stone to extend his life and overindulge in worldly pleasures. They also find a Latin inscription on the wall saying vitriol, which comes from the word vitriolum, meaning glassy, which was a term used by alchemists like Flamel to describe metal sulfates that resembled pieces of coloured glass. It's also important to note that this was a part of the motto used by alchemists, which meant that you had to visit the interior of the earth to find the hidden stone. Emboldened by this clue, the discovery of Flamel's preserved body, and their finding of an underwater passage, the group make their way to the fourth circle of hell, greed. This area was filled with treasure and also housed what they believe to be the Philosopher's Stone, which Scarlet is able to retrieve by deciphering yet another riddle. But when Papillon's friends attempt to steal the treasure by opening the gate that housed it, it's revealed to be a trap designed to punish the greedy, with the roof collapsing around them. Susie gets deep cuts to her arm, but is healed by the power of the Philosopher's Stone when Scarlet breaks a few pieces off and applies it to her hand. This, however, was yet another attempt at misdirection by the catacombs, as the stone was a fake designed to only work once. 
Scarlet uncovers another passage below them, leading further down through hell. They then find the inscription from Dante's Inferno reading, All hope abandon, ye who enter here, which is found at the gates of hell in Dante's poem. Knowing that they had to keep going down and having reached the exact centre of the distance between earth and hell, they continue down through the fifth circle of hell, Roth, where the furious souls found in Dante's Inferno that fought each other in the swampy waters could be heard. When they... When they go further down, they realise that they were in a room that was precisely the reverse of where they'd been earlier, tying into the film's title, As Above, So Below, which they found on Flamel's tombstone, earlier at the museum. Inside the room is Flamel's corpse, but unlike the one they'd seen at the start, which had been in good condition, this one was rotten. They also find Le Taupe sitting in the corner, appearing to be in a catatonic state, and having arrived into a hybrid of the sixth and seventh circles of hell, heresy and violence, their old friend suddenly attacks Susie in a savage act of violence, to me, this implied that their friend had denied the doctrines of Christianity, hence his twisted form here. While we don't get an explanation for why Susie was attacked, I think this had something to do with an event in her past where she'd violently attacked someone else, and since she was yet to confront her sin, Susie was now being punished. Benji is also attacked as they made their way to the eighth circle of hell, fraud, by an apparition of the same woman we'd seen earlier, only this time she's holding a baby, which caused him to lose his grip and fall over a hundred feet to his death. While we don't get anything about his backstory, I think it's implied that he had a child with a woman and either hurt them physically or had neglected them. What's sad is that both Benji and Susie never have an opportunity to rectify their sins, and it's not until Papillon encounters his apparition in the next circle of hell that the group realise what they had to do. It's here that they come across the man they'd initially met in their first tour of the catacombs who told them to seek out Papillon, only this time he's seen in the backseat of a burning car. The burn scar on Papillon's hand and his immediate recognition of the man indicated that Papillon had either been directly or indirectly responsible for his death. But because Pap refuses to accept responsibility for his sin, he is pulled into the burning vehicle which collapses in on itself, leaving only the legs of Papillon sticking out of the ground. A direct reference to Canto 19 of Dante's Inferno, which states that, out of the mouth of each one there protruded, the feet of a transgressor, and the legs up to the calf, the rest within remained. Now making it to the final centre of hell, treachery, they find a hooded figure sitting on a wooden chair, whom I took to be the devil sitting on his throne. After they sneak past him, the remaining survivors, George, Scarlet and Zed, are then besieged by stone bodies that break free from the wall and begin biting George on the neck. Though Scarlet attempts to use the Philosopher's Stone to heal him, they realise that the stone was a fake, and since she'd committed the sin of theft by taking the stone in the first place, she had to rectify this sin by returning it to where it belonged. Only then would she be able to find the true stone. To this end, Scarlet leaves Zed to take care of George as she traversed back to where she'd found the stone, and she encounters a much more hostile environment, including rivers of blood with hands trying to pull her down, to the ground covered in mouths trying to bite her feet. After she puts the stone back, she sees her reflection and realises that there was never a stone to begin with, with the power instead coming from the faith in oneself and in God. On her way back to where George and Zed were, she once again sees an apparition of her father, but this time apologises for not answering his call the night that he died. This essentially rectifies her sin, and having returned the stone and finding faith in herself and God, Scarlet is able to heal George's injuries by merely touching his wounds. Now pursued by hooded figures, implied to be the demon followers of the devil, the trio reach a dead end that was the bottom of hell and find a final passage down that represented their way out. But before they could go through, they all had to confront their sin. With Scarlet already rectifying her sins earlier, George confronts the guilt that he felt about abandoning his younger brother, while Zed admitted he had a son that he'd never seen and had denied was his. Having faced their demons, the group hold hands and take a literal leap of faith into the well, and fall for a long time before reaching the bottom. Uncovering some rocks below them, they find a maintenance hall leading back to the city. Their final path mirrors the last journey of Dante and Virgil, who passed directly through the centre of the universe and encountered the confusing gravity changes from the northern hemisphere to that of the southern hemisphere. After finally exiting hell, Scarlet and George embrace each other, while Zed left to find the child that he denied for many years. Given that Scarlet now had the powers of the elusive Philosopher's Stone, I wonder what the next chapter of her life will entail. Would she use it to help others in need, or keep it a secret? And given that the power was now within her, did this mean that she would live forever? Or that she would have an extended lifespan like Nicholas Flamel before her? Also, considering that Flamel was stuck in the third circle of hell, having used the stone to extend his life and overindulge in worldly pleasures, this might also mean that Scarlet would eventually end up in the same place that he was. I'm curious to hear what you guys thought of the ending, and what some of your theories were regarding the film in general, so please share these in the comments below. 
A huge thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at As Above, So Below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film and Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>